What's up guys, Slimer4 here, bringing you a World of Tanks video. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but I want to get back into it. I've been working out some issues with uh, video quality, and hopefully uh, this video is nice and smooth, unlike my last two World of Tanks videos. But anyway, I'm going to be continuing my little series on the American Heavy Tank line, and uh, today we're going to be looking at this T2 Medium Tank, which is the Tier 2 entry. We take a swift look at the uh, Tech Tree. From the Tier 1 T1 Cunningham, you can research the T2, and from there, you can go all the way to the American Heavy Tank line. And from the M3 Lee, you also can go to the M4 Sherman, which leads to the American Medium Tank line. In addition, from the EZ8, you can even get to the Jackson, which is the American uh, non-turreted tank destroyer line. So you can really research a large chunk of the American Tech Tree from this tank. Let's take a quick look at its stats here. It has 170 hit points, which if we compare it to say this T7 combat car, which has 150, or the uh, Russian Petrarch, which has 140, you can see it has a pretty solid uh, health pool um, for a tier 2 vehicle. Of course it's a medium tank, so that kind of explains that. But you're going to definitely enjoy having that extra hit points um, compared to like say uh, and you know another light tank because that extra 20 or 30 HP um, is not much but at a tier 2 when you have 170 hit points to play around with definitely makes a difference um, but if we look at the armor uh, you'll find that it's pretty poor only 22 all around front rear and side and the turret has 25 so in general you're not going to be stopping anything with this armor maybe you might bounce some stuff off the front of the turret or badly placed shots along the side but in general, don't expect to stop much with that armor. Uh, the story gets a little better if we look at the engine. We got 130, 340 horsepower on this guy, and the top speed is 40 kilometers per hour. And it can get up to that top speed very swiftly, as you'll see once we get into some gameplay. So it makes for a pretty flexible and mobile tank. Uh, there's a bit of a choice of gun. You can mount a 37mm, which I like to use. Um, or you can go for one of these 20 mil, this 20 millimeter cannon, which is the same thing from the T1 Cunningham. Or you also have the choice of this 37 millimeter Browning semi-automatic, which again comes from the T1 Cunningham. Uh, I generally prefer the uh, 37 millimeter gun simply because it has uh, 48 penetration over the 30 of the 20 millimeter. Hispano machine gun, and uh, I think when you're facing tier three, tier two, uh, and especially tier three targets, which the T1 Cunningham doesn't have to deal with, uh, you're definitely going to want that higher penetration value. But however, if you if you really like um, those machine gun type gameplays, uh, you can mount the 20 millimeter machine gun on this tank. Uh, but in general, the 37 millimeter is a pretty average all around uh, tier two weapon. Uh, it's got a pretty standard 40 damage and 48 penetration with your standard uh, and 70 with your gold rounds if you want to mount those guys. Um, but yeah, it, it makes for a very flexible and all-around tank. It looks like we got a battle on Melanovka. And this is a pretty much all tier 2 game. It looks like there's a couple tier 1s right at the bottom there. Um, so let's just kind of see how this this tank does. In a second, I'll kind of show you the uh, acceleration I was talking about earlier. You kind of look as I uh, start accelerating from zero. As soon as the battle starts, you'll see I uh, I'm gonna go hill. You're gonna see this tank accelerate very swiftly to its top speed. Even if you're up on, like on a slight slope, it's gonna accelerate very quickly. This will make it generally a very maneuverable tank, like look at that. Literally about five seconds and boom, I'm at my top speed. Um, it's not, it doesn't have a super great traverse speed. It has 40 degrees per second, but when you compare it to say like a BT-2 or a BT-7 or an M2 light tank, it's actually a pretty decent uh, traverse speed. Another thing to note is the gun is actually fairly reliable and accurate. That was badly placed, but um, it does aim fairly swiftly. Um, 
which is pretty refreshing for a tier 2. Uh, super annoying when you have to deal with tanks that have just terrible aim times. So the gun is, is actually very reliable, and it also fires every uh, 2.46 seconds, so it's pretty solid. So you can kind of see the, the accuracy of the gun here. I found it to be pretty accurate and pretty reliable as well. Putting the shots generally where you want them to be. Weren't able to finish off that T2. One shot bounce, one shot did go wild. But, uh, not, not too bad. And you kind of saw that was my opposite number, the T2. And you kind of saw the turret armor at work there. One of my shells did bounce off the turret. So you can kind of see it. it does have that turret going for it a bit. But generally the tank is so large, you're not going to have much chance for people to shoot your turret. Uh, they're going to probably be going straight for the rest of your tank. Another thing to note is the gun depression is not bad. Uh, it's not really fantastic. Like, it's the next tank on the line, the M2 medium tank, is, it has great gun depression. But it is something to kind of note. I gotta be very careful to help out my teammate here. This T2 light tank got himself into a bit of a trouble. I need to push up. Help him out. I also am kind of watching if that T7 car gets spotted again. I'll put some shots on him. There he is. Just check out the same time. Very swift. And we put him down. And that was at a pretty long range, so it was it's a very reliable gun in general. Now we can just keep pushing up. A lot of times at lower tier games on uh, this map, the hill is pretty neglected. So generally, uh, if you're a good player, just go hill, and you can if you take control of this area, you can just slowly crush your opponents uh, and kind of hem him into their base. Because newer players often, and this is a good tip if you are a newer player, is don't just camp at base on this map. Generally you're not going to have much targets and you're just going to die once the uh, enemy gets your flank. Like we are just about to do here. I'm going to kind of move towards the middle here and engage this T2. But that... Put a shot. Put another shot. Put him down. Also got an arty here. Let's see if I can get a shot on him. Yes, we do. Again, that aim time is my friend. Look at that. Very swift aim time. That shot went a little wild. Oh, I see why. Like, why am I not doing damage? It was hitting the uh, the ridge line there. Only the very top of the tank was actually showing. That was my shots were going into the into the into the hill there. I'll just wait for the T2 to spot him again. And then put my shot. In. Did miss, but oh well. We're gonna win anyway. I don't begrudge him the kill. Got a T1. Wait for me to aim. Did miss my first shot. Did miss my second shot, which is a bit frustrating. That one bounced. Critical hit. Ricochet. Critical hit. This Panzer II is well angled, unfortunately. I need to put a shot like. Panzer II is one of the more heavily armored vehicles, so I gotta really be careful here because I, I could easily throw this game. Because as I was sitting there wasting my time bouncing shots and missing shots, um, our team has unfortunately taken a little bit of uh, damage. We lost our T2 light, so I gotta take this very carefully. My my view range is, is pretty poor in this tank, um, so I gotta kind of hope my allies help me out there. Tracked him with his rear armor facing me. So it won't take long for me to put shots into his rear armor. Also this T1 is dead. See if I can use this accuracy to put a shot in. Didn't expect him to curve that way. Just gotta keep putting the shots in though. Surprised that T1 is not dead yet. He's in a bit of an odd position, to be honest. Now, with my, my penetration, it's a little hard for me to put shots through that. 
Now, this is a bit, bit tricky. That that TK has has pretty low penetration values, so I'm gonna try to side scrape on this Hulk. Put the shots into it. Excellent. Now I need to just take my time. Oh, there's only one tank left. <laughs> I actually don't need to take my time. I lied to you guys. We just can roll in here and win the game from this position. Um. And that's why the flanking maneuver is so strong because it opens up a great opportunity for your team. Some shots. Yeah, here we go. The M2 is going to try to run to the right, I believe, but it's no use. You can see that that excellent maneuverability again coming into play here. I missed it again. <whistles> Bit of a bad play there. I, I I wasn't really sure what I was. Yeah, that that little train dip kind of messed me up. But irrelevant. That was a good little battle there. And hopefully that kind of showed you some of the strengths of this vehicle. It's a very good all-around tank. Uh, I think it's a fantastic sniper as well. The accuracy is pretty nice on it. Um, so compared to a lot of tier 2 vehicles, it's pretty easy to put shots on the target. Finished third on damage there, and second on XP. We got four kills, so it's a pretty solid little game. And also got our Master Badge first class, which is okay. 787 basic speed. So, pretty solid little game there from the T2 Lite. As I said, this is a tank that shouldn't be too uh, much of a pain to play. It's the gun I find to be very enjoyable, um, as long as you kind of stay safe. Uh, and as well, you can, against lower tier players, you can pull off a little bit of side scraping uh, in this tank. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Um, if you did, give it a like down below. Next time we're going to be looking at the uh, M2 medium tank which is an extremely interesting tank I'm very much looking forward to that and I'll catch you guys later